Your job is to understand your property, understand your land patent, except we're going to call it the last grant deed. Now, acceptance of this grant deed is very important. What that means is you're going to, you're going to cut the string and fraud vitiates everything. So you're going to cut the string and all these abstracts are going to fall away and you're going to weld a brand new link of chain right here that's you so that you have unbroken superior title to your land. Now you got to be the king to do this and the king can't be the king without owning his castle. It's very important. So acceptance of this last grant deed is incredibly important. Posting the property of the land patent is incredibly important. Your property may be that. Now you have to be able to defend it. Once you get it done, that's great. You're the king, you own the castle. But the county is going to come in and they're going to continue to try and steal it. And how do they steal it? Ah, worse than that. They steal it through administrative errors. This is why I tell people you only have two jobs in life from this point forward. Correct the errors your public servants make and educate them so they don't ever do it again. So here's what they do. They mail you a property tax statement and you get the presentment. And you look at this presentment as the king and you go, holy Moses, I would probably do an acceptance on this if there wasn't completely full of errors. So you make a whole bunch of full color copies of it. Make as many as you need, one for each error, because the whole damn thing's full of errors, every bit of it. Then you start up at the left-hand corner and you start circling errors. So up in the first box of this, it says parcel number. 92-10-08-101-076.000-006. Who made that shit up? Yeah. Has nothing to do with your dirt. Has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with your land patent. And it has nothing to do with your grant deeds. It's just shit made up. It's SMU. So you circle it and you say incorrect description. And you go down to a blank spot on the page and you put a big old circle and you should say land patent numbers. Now, my, my friend Doug, his piece of property sits right here on two land patents. So his says land patent number 6743 and 6747. And then you write exhibit A at the bottom because you're gonna use it as an exhibit in your affidavit. Then you move to the next box. And the next box says property type, real estate. Real estate, what a word they came up with. Just more shit made up. Whose estate is it? It's their real estate. They stole it. It should say private property. So you circle it. Go down to a blank spot in the page, draw a circle, write the word private property in there and say, correct the error. Exhibit B. Go to the next box. This one's funny. They got it down here. Deeded owner's name. Dyson Doug. Now, if you know my friend Douglas... Dyson. You know Dyson Doug is not his name and it pisses him off. So everywhere on the paper that they wrote his name, Dyson Doug, he circled it. Name error, Douglas Allen Dyson. Exhibit C. See, they made a whole, just a whole bunch of administrative errors, one after another, after another, after another. And through administrative error, if you look that up in the law, it's no fault of theirs. And administrative error is no fault of theirs. The fault lies in the man who doesn't correct it. You acquiesce. You write the check and you acquiesce to the contract and you let them steal your property on behalf of the state. Okay? Exhibit C. Go to the next box. Property address 3830 East E State Road 14, Columbia City, I capital N capital. He happens to live in Indiana. I capital N capital doesn't stand for Indiana. No, not when you know English styles manual. It stands for the state of Indiana, the corporation. Doug knows this very well. That's Indiana. That's the land. See, they made a mistake, but they kept making them. And then they put a zip code or 46725. What does that do? Put it in the federal district overlay so that you can be arrested in the federal district so you're subject to their jurisdiction. And then they put IN so you're subject to the state jurisdiction just by the sheer use of how you write your address or how they write it.